My name is Wilson Levi with Play TV, that is Progressive Leadership amongst its YouTube. Welcome, Wilson. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm well aware of who you are, but for the benefits of our viewers out there who might not have a notion of who you are, can you kindly introduce yourself? Well, uh, my name is Abdul Salam Abdul Kano from Kano. I uh, was born in Kano, grew up in Kano. School in Kano. Business took me out of Kano. Not only in uh, some part of Nigeria, but to the outside of the country. This is me. Wow, interesting. Talking about the story of Kano, practically he spends most of your life in Kano. Exactly. Can you tell us a bit about growing up in Kano? Kano is an ancient city with a lot of history. Mm -hmm. How was it like growing up in one of Nigeria's oldest states? Well, growing up in Kano, we have a lot of challenges. Most of them, which are challenges like the environmental factors. The factors that affect the Kano environment were those of uh, maybe uh, being uh, either you are a privileged child or not privileged uh, child or person. It depends on where you come from. And uh, that will favor the kind of life or the upbringing you will have in Kano. You may have a better or a very good family upbringing, but to be, or the, the environment to make you be a productive person is what matters. How will you be a productive person growing up in, a, in an environment like Kano? Everybody knows Kano is a city of uh, business. Most people that help from Kano are known to be business people, business oriented people. But at the same time, you must have a link or you must have uh, some time, either a family, background, or a business, like we used to say in Kano. Uh, this is why a lot of our teaming youth don't have privilege of growing up or coming uh, from an oriented family that somebody will grow up to learn, find it difficult. To have something to do or to be to have to be self-productive from Kano. In your own case, were you privileged or you were among the not so privileged allowed to find yourself in business? From my home, I was not oriented to be a business person. I went to school and I didn't grow up at home to see a business that I will either inherit or uh, get orientation like okay, you grow up now, follow on this line, do this. And going back to the age of uh, teenage age at that time, when you grow up, you would like to see that uh, you attend a greener pasture. How do you get that? It's, it's, not, it's not everybody that will grow up to, to maybe have an option of taking a hard job. Hard job meaning that uh, uh, jobs that are not white color jobs. You understand? Something that has to do, you have to go to market or you have to follow people to learn, you have to be an apprentice to learn something or even if it is a market, you have to go and uh, spend all the day. I don't, you don't expect to work inside office, you expect to work in the sun, the soya, so you expect to suffer, to learn. But one thing uh, young people don't understand or they don't know is that suffering is what will prepare you to be somebody or what will prepare your future. At times when you suffer, you will learn more. That is why sometimes uh, you will see some business we have either in Kano or in uh, our society don't go beyond second generation of that business. Because the generation that created or originated the business that nurtured it to be where it is, the next generation cannot take it over. So anybody that grew up in Kano, uh, at the, in the same way I was brought up, will have a mindset of going out there to find out something for himself, to get what to do for himself, to prepare himself for the future or how to uh, earn a greener question. So in your own case, what was the first business you it was not a very sweet business. I say, okay, what the, what I know first 
when I was in school. It's after school I would like take jerry cans. That time there was fuel scarcity. And we have a privilege of uh, knowing somebody who is uh, who was then a deferred supervisor who would get petrol at the pump right then sell it outside. But that that is not only business that I, I take at that time. But I'm giving you this as a business that put me on the line of what I'm doing now. All those things prepared me, prepared me well. I have seen challenges. I have seen what life had for me in future. I have seen that uh, when you are growing, you don't have to rely on a parent or somebody to help you or to uh, to give you something that you will earn, you will make a living. You can go out there and earn something to help yourself. For me, I don't see doing any legitimate business as something bad. Anything legitimate, any form of work that you do that is legitimate, that does not tamper with the law of the country or the law of the nation, is not something that I like. It's either shameful or something, or you look at somebody's eyes and say, no, I don't want to see somebody or so of us see me selling this or doing that. You don't have to take what you cannot carry. Exactly. Wow, that's a very interesting story. Love that Let's go into politics. Um, you have interest in politics. I mean, a successful businessman. So why politics? Why did you choose to go into politics? Much people in this country see politics as a game for dirty minded people. Yeah, very good. I like your question. Uh, to me, I don't see politics as a dirty game, unless if the mind of that politician is dirty. If your mind is not dirty, politics is the best way to come in and render good service or help you. But if your mind is dirty, either you are a businessman, it will remain dirty. You will be a businessman, you will build empire of business, you cannot help anybody. So, coming in to do politics is part of what I have in my heart for my people, for the community. I don't see it as a dirty game. I clean my heart even when I'm doing business. And I make it cleaner when I want to go into politics because I know it has a lot of challenges. And I'm ready to take those challenges. One of the challenges I have seen in politics is where politicians are mismanaging the resource of the country. I have seen politics from my own side of view that the little or the resource, the way the resource are managed can be managed better in a better way and it will make impact to the view. This is why I want to go into it and see. Can I make impact? more than what I'm doing now as a business person with my own personal money or with my own personal resources. I join politics to make an impact to the life of people. I join politics to see that uh, I bring in something that people have been missing, which is their privilege of getting what belongs to them that is taken away maybe by one person. He under some few group of people. He understand. I join politics to see that if I can change the way or the perception of people towards politics. Now you said politics is a dirty game. I myself don't believe it's a dirty game. Unless when you make it dirty. Unless when you are dirty. Unless when you want to dirty your hand with public funds. If you are given, uh, for example, 1,000 naira for the public, if you take 100 naira out of 1,000, you make it dirty if it does not belong to you. But if you are given 1,000 to work for the public and you put that 1,000 into what it has to be done, what makes politics dirty here? Do you see it dirty in this way? So why don't we come back? and sanitize the politics. If there is no politics, how do we, how, if there is no politics, how do we get governance? A governance cannot just form itself naturally. There should be a process, and the process is called what? 
politics. So that means the government is dirty. If politics is dirty, then we should sanitize the government. We should sanitize the process. This is why I come into it. And I think I will help to sanitize it. That's so good. Now, talking about the same politics now, uh, people have easily gone into one of the two main parties in the country, the All Progressive Congress or the Most Democratic Party. But instead, you choose the Green Party. Why? Why the Green Party is in the market? Thank you very much uh, for your question. Uh, I have all the chance to go into any political party in Nigeria. I was uh, from the background, maybe a politician in the FEC. Not a, 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 yeah, not a full politician or not a key player in the way you are seeking for an elective office or so. But uh, I'm impressed and uh, I'm carried away by the manifesto of the Green Party, which one of the manifesto is giving youth chance to play their role in politics. This is one of the manifesto, which none of the party has this in their own manifesto. And I have seen a manifesto of a party that has to do with less privilege. People that are nobody can participate and be somebody in politics. This is Green Party. Green Party is a party of people with disability, which I have not seen any manifesto or any party that has a room for somebody with disability. Green Party is a party that carries all the genders, men, women, youth, either you are a woman or you are a man. And most, most importantly, it creates more room for youth to participate in politics. I joined politics in short because of the Green Party. I'm attracted to the Green Party to join politics. And I think Green Party come to make a lot of changes. Green Party come, as I said, come to sanitize the way politics is played in Nigeria. And when you look at the people that are involved in Green Party, from top coming to down, people coming in, you know, yes, there is going to be total sanitation, total overhauling of mm. political system in Nigeria. And we are coming. Yes. We are coming to overhaul the system. I see that. We are coming to take the system to workshop. We are coming to drop the engine of politics, work inside it, overhaul it. We are coming to remove the dirties, which you said uh, is dirty. We will remove the dirt, clean it, that everybody will see that uh, the system is clean. Politics is a good game. Now you have your people in your mind, then you should join politics. Even in sport, you watch football. Yes. You see how players, how a vibrant player is at a younger age. When he attends certain age, they will start reducing his price. If they sign him at the high, very high cost, now they will divide the cost. They will be given. At the end of the day, they will say it's pre transfer. Is not more productive. You will be productive at the youthful age. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So you should come into politics. Okay. Uh, you are coming, you have an interest, you should be interested in the executive government, you can use it in such a way. I told me before, I'm someone who was born and brought up in Kano. I know Kano State very well. Since when I was small, I, I tore inside Kano with my bare foot. I know the problem of Kano. When I was growing up, I would see Kano. It's one of the most vibrant states or city in Nigeria. I saw Kano as the most productive city in Nigeria. So I'm aspiring to be a governor of Kano State Goodwill in 2019 because I know I will bring a very fundamental change in Kano. I will make Kano that it has never been all these years, which 
I know this is a digital world, not an analog world. The era of analog is gone. Maybe they don't know the technique on how to make things work. We see how people make their use productive. But we see here, we are sitting down, we see how they are making us or our uh, brothers or sisters unproductive. We see how our people are driving us by force to abuse drugs. We see how they are driving by force, how our people are driven by force to commit several kind of crimes. Which at their own age, those days, when they are giving you examples, they say we have not done that, we have not done this. Were they being pushed to do this like the same way they are pushing us to do this? They were not pushed. They were given all the free village. They were taken to better schools. The schools where they attended, they were even being, they have been, they were given allowance. They used to pay them allowances, give them school uniform, do this now, go and see their schools in Kenya. You see children sitting on the floor, and you see a school, a school, a class taking more than 80 people and one is holding another. There is nowhere they can write. Common table they don't have. No chair to sit. A class where uh, 25 people will sit comfortably and learn. Now they are squeezing 70 people. Did they tell you they used to compress women? They don't compress women. You compress children 80 in a class, how do you expect them to learn? How do you expect them to be productive? How do you expect their brain to expand and capture or to learn something? We have to come out. We have to come and check this. We have to take this. Youth have been standing behind the scene. We want to take the center stage. Mm -hmm. So as a young person, what are your plans for the youth of Kano State? Very good question. I like it. This is one of my first reason, one of my reasons to go into this contest. I'm going in for the youth of Kano State. Because I have seen a situation where the youth of Kano State are abandoned. The youth of Kano State are no longer uh, uh, time as uh, people. The youth of Kano State in the other way have no future. Because there is nothing for them, or nothing is preparing their future. If I will ask you a question, now one question, can you tell me what one factor or one thing that will prefer or will prefer a youth growing up in Kano to be a self-reliant person? Have you seen one? The school that will prefer somebody is has deteriorated. No good education, no good school, no means of teaching somebody business to be self-reliant. People strive by themselves, by force, by any means to learn to go to market. Some of the market facilities, some of the things that will help them to learn to be self-reliant are no more there. My plan for the youth of come is to come, take the government to be a government for the youth. The focus of the government will focus on the youth. How do we cut off this minus of drug abuse in Kano? Which people you see from the age of 16 started to abuse drugs because of so many things in Kano. We have to stop drug abuse. We have to stop all illicit things. We have to bring in or we have to bring back life to the use of Kano. I know somebody, people I know in Kano from the Teenage age now they are youth. When I travel, I come back. They are still selling. Either they are selling dagger on the uh, cardinal on the street light. Still nothing changed. They were not even able to create or to to make table where they can sit. They are still selling for over seven seven years, eight years, ten years. Somebody doing the same thing, doing street hockey. Is there a future in this? Okay. And these same people have seen them. They know them because they are not either in their home, they are in, none of them in their son or brother or re uh, relatives. They just want them to waste their life like this. Doing street hockey, we have to change it. We have to make youth our priorities. We have to take what belongs to us, the youth. The youth are the people that fight, take the governance, and then they will come and give one man who is tired. 
who cannot take them along, they will go and hold their hand again for another year. Next year they will bring them again, tell them sweet things. They will go again fight, collect it, come and give them. And they will not carry them along. I hope you are getting it. It is time now we fight for it. We sit down, uh, write the recipes, cook it, and share them. We give them their own share also. Now we manage it by ourselves. We, keep, we cook it to our test. We are not secluding them like you. No, we are including them. When the time comes, when, when everybody is given a constitutional right to declare himself, that time I will come out. That time I will come out a roar like a lion. That okay, I'm coming to take Kano. Let anybody, everybody know I'm coming. And I'm not coming to take Kano alone. I'm coming, the youth of Kano are coming to take what belongs to them. We want to stop the recycling process happening yes. in the Senate. Yes. You understand? It's a process of all people, the same people. We make a political system in Nigeria like, uh, the, uh, like plastic can. When you drink the water, you throw the take it, go back to the factory, recycle it, and bring it back the same way. Let us see fresh people. Let us see the youth taking. When you look at the sun, you see youth. When you look at the governors, you see youth. That was how we saw Nigeria when we, we, we read in the history. Yes. We, saw, we read in the history when Nigerian president was 39 years old. We read in the history when the uh, governor was 25 years old. Although at that time we know there is a limit, limit, uh, limit of uh, I mean education or so, but even at this time, that it is an era of uh, modern education, I mean, uh, era of uh, intellectuals in the uh, digital life yes. like this. This is where it, where youth come first, because those second generations uh, people, it's not their time. You should come forward. You should not be going back thinking they cannot do it. They can do it. They did it before. Youth did it before. Youth, when they were leading Nigeria, was better. At that time, we have abundance. The economy was our economy was stable, was good. Yes. To the extent, countries outside, countries outside, in the world coming to Nigeria seeking for loan. Aid and a lot of things. I, I can take you a little back to the 70s when United Arab Emirates during Yakubu Gawan we read and we heard that they came to Nigeria seeking for loan. Why they came to Nigeria seeking for loan? At that time, when the head of state was 39 years old and then the economy was very good. To the extent that a country like UAE came to Nigeria to seek for, for loan. And now, go to UAE. I'll compare between UAE and Nigeria. The difference is massive. It's uncomfortable. You cannot compare the two. And now that UAE, go and see. The, the, the youth from the age of 28 to 35 years are the one ruling the country. All those sheikhs at some certain times step down and give their uh, children who are huge, who are strong and vibrant to take over the role, to take over the leadership. Why not us here? This is the time. It is time for the youth now. It is now or never. Mm, I like that. Now or never. Now or never. That's a catchphrase. Time is now. Time is now.